This is for third grade ELA text at nine. Realistic fiction. Today we are going to read Dumpling Soup. This is the dedication or the um, dedication page, and now we have a glossary. In Sky Sisters, you learned some words in Anawashwaba Okawa language. This glossary has words in four languages: Hawaiian, Japanese, Korean, and English. What do you think that tells us about the setting and characters we'll read about in Dumpling Soup? As you read Dumpling Soup, you can look back to the glossary for words that you don't understand. Publishers note, in the fall of 1990, we held our first New Voices New World contest. Um, let's skip all that. San Hawaii, where nearly 50 different races are represented, dumpling soup is a rich mix of food, whole language, and customs from many link cultures, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Hawaiian, and Hello. The district, the district traditions and true heritage of each culture are not forgotten, but play a virtual part in the close-knit family's life. And in the preparation and eating of their traditional dumpling soup, today, when our country is faced with the challenging challenge of creating one nation out of many peoples, we see a special place in children's literature for a story that fosters such love and respect for diversity. So we just learned some important things about the main character. She lives in Oahu. Oahu. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Never mind. Every year on New York New New Year's Eve, my whole family goes to Grandma's house for dumpling soup. My aunties and uncles and cousins come from all around Oahu. Most of them are Korean, but some are Japanese, Chinese, Hawaiian, and Halu, Hawaiian for white people. Grandma calls our family chop suey, which means all mixed up. In pidgin, it, I like it that way. So does Grandma. More spice, she says. This year, since I am seven, Grandma says I can help make dumplings, too. Everybody in my family loves to eat, so we have to make lots and lots of dumplings. So, you've just learned some important things about the main character. She lives in Oahu, which is in Hawaii. How do you know about, what do you know about her family? Pidgin means a simple language devised for communication between people who speak different languages. The next, the night before New Year's Eve, Grandma, Auntie Elsie, and Auntie Ruth, and Auntie Grace come to our house to work on the filling. My mother has bought great big pile of beef, pork, vegetables to fill the dumplings and special dumpling wrappers from the Gum Chu Lu Noodle Factory in Honolulu. Everyone brings her own cleaver and cutting board and sits at the kitchen table, chopping and talking, chopping and talking, late into the night. Too much gossip, says Grandma in Korean, mince the cabbage, more bean sprouts. It is her recipe, so she is very picky. What about me? I need, I want to help. Tomorrow, Marissa answers, Grandma, you can help us wrap. So tonight, I watch Grandma mix everything in a bowl, metal pan, more tofu, more onion, more salt, more soy sauce. My aunties keep working, and I fall asleep listening to the chop, chop, pounding, chip, chop, scrap, scrape. Later, when my mother wakes me up to the go to bed, her hands smell like garlic. The next morning, I am the first one up. I wake up my brother, Haram. Then together, we tiptoe to my mother and father's room. Get up, get up. It's New Year's Eve. We have to go to Grandma's to wrap the mandu. Not yet, my mother says, with her eyes still closed. Please wait till the sun comes up, said my father. But we were all too excited to sleep today. Everyone will be at Grandma's. We will see cousins we haven't seen all year. We will still, we will stay up all night. Haran will help my, help my uncles with the fireworks. But best of all, I will learn to wrap dumplings for dumpling soup. When we finally got to Grandma's, other aunties were ne live near Wahama have already started wrapping. All of our auntie all of Auntie Freyer's dumplings are rectangles and she lines them up like soldiers. Auntie Rush pinches her dumplings along the edges to make them look fancy. Auntie Grace pit, puts more filling in the middle than anyone else. I like fat ones, she says. 
Okay, Marissa, they are for you. These are for you. Grandma places a small stack of wrappers in front of me. My mother pushes her bowl of finger dripping, dipping water closer. I want to make good dumplings. I want to show my aunties. I try to copy them, but sometimes I put too much filling in the middle. Sometimes I don't put enough water along the edges. My dumplings look a little funny, not perfect, like, like the ones my aunts have made. What if no one wants to eat them? I feel Grandma's hand on my shoulder and look up. Chak, chak, chu, ha, bwa, Marissa. I don't understand all of Grandma's Korean, but I can tell by her face what she's saying. Don't worry, keep trying. Soon there are trays and trays of beautiful wrapped dumplings all over the kitchen. They look like hundreds of baby bottoms, wrapped in diapers, powdered on the outside. Mine look a little sad, all, all, all different lumpy shapes. One by one, my mother tosses all of them into Grandma's biggest pot, pot pulling, full of boiling water. So that's an interesting description. How does comparing the dumplings to baby bottoms and diapers help you imagine what they look like? If you had Korean-style dumplings, is this description a good one when the dumplings are cooled cooked they float up wrinkled and shiny grandma calls my father for the official taste test no one knows spe spices like he does he bites into one of the cool dumplings chews slowly and wr wrinkles his forehead what to a you too spicy hot my father's my mother is anxious saying not enough salt or a hua, too salty. He gobbles up the rest of the dumplings, smiling and nodding. Mmm, a new. One more to make sure. I watch the pot carefully from my dumplings. There there they are. Bit, some float up without their wrappers, and others look like they lost their filling. Grandma scoops all of them into a col colander to cool. We'll eat your mandu later, she tells me, but I worry that they are bad mandu and that no one will want to eat them. Is Grandma putting them away so they won't spoil the soup. Maybe it's bad luck to eat ugly dumplings in, on New York New, New, New Year. Before I can ask her, more relatives knock on the door. They come from far away from Kanui, Kala, and Guala. Now Wahali, which means place of noise in Hawaiian, becomes a place of big noise. <clears throat> I hold the screen door open for all the aunties carrying he heaping plates of food. Watch out, coming through. They bring homemade sushi, wan, and sashimi. Auntie Mori arrives last with a special treat, Japanese moki. She says mokei means to stay in your stomach for a long time. Mogazuki means full moon. Little cakes do look like white moons, and sweet, chewy bites feel so good in our stomachs. Moki helps keep the family stuck together. Michael, my young ho says after swallowing seven in a row. So Marissa said moki in Jap Japanese. I know. I also know sushi and shish sashimi are Japanese foods, and yuan is Korean. It looks like having people of many nationalities in your family means having lots of different foods. More cars drive up. Now they line the whole street. By 6 o'clock, Grandma's front steps are covered with big, medium, and little slippers, sandals, and shoes. So many youngs. So what does this big illustration tell you about the setting? How does it compare with the street where you live? New Year's Eve is the only night in the whole year we are allowed to stay up all night. Grandma told us that in Korea, if you fall asleep before midnight, your eyebrows would turn snowy white. But staying awake is easier for us. We never run out of ga games. Let's hug Grandma, shout my hada cousin. Maxie, this is our favorite game. We line up in front of Grandma when it is my turn. I stretch my arms to reach around her bouncy, soft tummy and then rest my head against it. She laughs, and my head bobs up and down. My grandma is like a warm pillow. Inside and out, everyone finds something fun to do. We play a game we can play only on New York's sh shoe store. We go to the front steps. I'll be the shoe store lady, shouts Kara. The rest of us take turns trying on all our favorite styles. Do you have these gold slippers in size 50 and a half? As Maxie, aren't these red high heels just perfect with my mamu? 
<coughs> um, aren't these red hot? Uh, Alicia shows off. After a while, all the slippers and shoes get mixed up and seem to be walking all over Grandma's yard. Since it has gotten so late, we really should pick them up, but we're too tired. And when it's almost midnight, we hear Haram and the older cousins running to put big star sparklers into the grass. So, why do you think there are so many shoes on Grandma's doorstep? Do people take off their shoes before or after they enter your house or apartment? Somebody check the clock. Order Haram. Alicia presses her face against the screen door. Twelve minutes to twelve, she yells. All of a sudden, it is almost time, and everybody moves quickly. From every corner of the house, the yangs come. Everyone finds a place to stand on the cool grass. All the cousins gather under the lychee tree. The babies rub their eyes and whine. My Chinese cousin, Helene, says fireworks scare away the evil spirits. We want good luck in the coming year. Grandma takes one last look around to make sure everyone is there. For a moment, the only sound is the shush of the hapa plants. Goodbye, old year, I whisper. Finally, we count down the seconds till midnight. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Thousands of fireworks explode, filling the sky with smoke all up and down. Grandma's street, there is popping and snapping. Our eyes water and our ears ring. Haram and I run to light all the sparklers and write our names in the night sky. Cousins, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and friends hug and shake for hands. Finally, Grandma calls. Papla of Mugulap Sada. Time for dumpling soup. If we eat first thing on New Year's Day, we won't go hungry for the rest of the year. My father reminds us the table is set with deep bowls and big spoons. Eh, says Uncle Mignon. What kind of man do this? I quickly look in some of the bowls. Oh no, Grandma's put one of my funny-looking dumplings in each. Must be the ones Risa made, said Haram. They look like little elephant ears. Everybody laughs. My face feels hot. Uncle Mio blows on his spoon and takes a bite. Oh, Marissa, delicious. Grandma walks over. Her bowl is full of mandoon. I've been waiting all night to taste these, she says. Here, have one. She puts another funny-looking triangle on my bowl. We bite into our dumplings at the same time. Agu Macham, she says. This is the best minju I've ever tasted. I finished my funny-looking dumpling. Mmm, Grandma's right. It is good. The spice is tickle my tongue. Who wants more of Marissa's mandu? Grandma asks. Everybody holds out his bowl. I hold out my bowl, too. More dumplings. More smacking chicken broth. Warm, steamy, and delicious. With our dumplings, we eat roast pork, three kinds of kimashi, spinach, and bean sprout, namal, spicy seaweed, tagu, boiled tripe, and octopus. Ram and I love the Korean dessert we get only on New Year's. Yak Pop, he pulls off a chunk of the brown sticky rice mixed with honey, dates in pine nuts, and hands it to me. I lick every bit off my fingers. Your elephant ears are sure tastes better than they look, he says. I think about how much everyone liked the dumpling soup. Every, even my funny dumplings. Maybe it was because we ate them at Grandma's, all of us together. Next year, I tell everyone I will make even better dumplings. I can hardly wait. Hello, brand new year. All right. What do you think it means when Marissa says her face feels hot? How does she feel?